All right, this is my own personal lawnmower and it was acting up a couple days ago. And so I went through the carb and cleaned out a little bit of debris that was in there. But as I was doing it, I was reminded how I've had several people with machines like this, a Honda GCV 160, they brought it to me with the carb off and they've been really frustrated by getting the carburetor back on. And so I thought since this is such a common machine and carburetor issues are so common, I would do two part video, one, how to take the carb on and off and some tricks to make that job less frustrating and then um, how i would rebuild and clean this carb and to do this job to get it off all you need is a 10 millimeter socket it doesn't have to be this kind it can be any 10 millimeter socket this is just on a gun so it's faster and a little pair of pliers is good but you can actually do it even without pliers i'm just going to be a little bit professional and do it with pliers so let me throw this in the tripod and we'll get right into it so you take the air filter cover off, you take the air filter off, and you have two 10 millimeter bolts. Now, as you do this the first time, you're gonna wanna be careful as you remove this so that you know how things go back together. I'm gonna do it more quickly because I don't have to pay attention because I've done it before. But you loosen these. I would suggest pulling one out it's just a long stud like that. Leave the other one in so that as you disassemble it, you can examine how it goes back together. And this is where people have a trouble is they pull this out and then they do this and everything just kind of falls and then they forget which goes where, what goes where. So on the back side of this air filter, you have uh, air filter housing, you have this tube, which goes here to the crankcase. Then you have a gasket Then you have the carburetor itself. Then you have a gasket, then you have the automatic choke, and then you have, oh yeah, turn this valve off so you don't leak fuel. Then you have another gasket that often stays on the cylinder head. Okay, so then to get the carb off, you need to remove the fuel line. A pair of pliers helps, although I had this off yesterday, so it's not really needed. There's this little tiny clamp on there, but if you just twist it to where it's loose, and then you just push a little bit, you can pop this guy off without too much drama. Then you very lightly and gently remove this little spring, and then you turn this to the side and you pull the lever out of the uh, throttle. And there's a big hole and a little hole, and the big hole's for the rod and the little hole's for the spring. Okay, so now the carb's off, and I'm gonna show you how this is rebuilt in a second video, but now I'm gonna show you how to put it back together. Okay, so we know and, and I'm also gonna show you kind of how to reverse engineer this in case you've never done this kind of thing. Okay, so we know that the automatic choke goes on, but we may not know which way it goes. You can look at that by this pin interacts with this uh, wax pellet, and this is what moves the choke around. So we know that that goes in that direction, and we know that that went first. Then we may be wondering how this gasket went. And if you examine the gasket and the impressions left by the gasket, you can reverse engineer that. And you can see that these indentations in the carb are on the top but not the bottom. And you can see that you have this indentation here on the top but not the bottom. So we know that that goes like that. And then we know that that goes like that. So you can start to build the stack yourself. Then you have this gasket. You may not know how he went on, but if you study it a little bit, you'll see that there's this hole at about 10 o'clock and there's a hole here at 10 o'clock. So you could put him like that. Then you take this, you study the way that that went on, which is this tube going in that direction and you can get all this lined up. And what you wanna do on these is not try and line it up on the engine and then put the, these studs in. You wanna put the studs in first, like so, and then start putting everything on there like this. Now the one caveat to this, oops, the one caveat to this, I'm gonna do this right myself. <laughs> For what's worth, this is here to protect the fuel from getting too hot from the engine. So the caveat, so basically, once you have this as a big stack, you can then put it on the engine very easily. That's much easier than trying to hold all these components in and slip in these studs. Now, the observer will notice that I haven't hooked these things up yet. 
and it's easier to hook these up without this whole stack on there. But I just wanted to demonstrate that first. So let me now put those on there. So the rod goes first, then the spring, then the fuel line. Okay, now we pick back up where I was saying. So we have our gasket. Then you push the studs through the carburetor holes. Sometimes this tripod gets in my way, so sorry it slows me down. Then you line up your gasket. Then you line up your automatic choke. And then you don't have to hook up this piece, this hose for the air filter yet. Start the bolts by hand until they feel like they've threaded in. That way you don't cross thread anything. Then do a little on one side, a little on the other. So you get things lined up properly, nothing cross threaded, nothing on an angle. And then you can reach in behind like this and plug in that last hose. There's plenty of space to do that. You turn on your fuel valve, reinstall your air filter and your cover, and you're off to the races in six minutes. And that included almost two minutes of extra time just to show you how to reverse engineer things. So getting these on and off is actually very simple. If you kind of know what you're doing, know what you're looking for, and you know a trick or two of the trade. And now I'm gonna take it over to the bench and I'm gonna show you how I would clean and disassemble this. Stay tuned.